Factors. Live from Waterford and on Garvin, this is Waterford at One News. Good afternoon. Today's top stories. The election in Tipperary is to go ahead on Saturday as scheduled. Sinn Féin's Conor Murphy will make a public apology to Paul Quinn's family today. More than 1,700 creches have closed around the country today in protest at high fees and low pay in the childcare sector and in sport. Interim Deputy CEO of the FAI, Niall Quinn, says supporting the League of Ireland is a necessity, not a choice. The election in Tipperary is to go ahead on Saturday as scheduled. Electoral staff have been told to expect the vote to take place. The returning officer for the constituency says it's subject to written confirmation. Our political correspondent Sean Defoe reports. As the parties are picking over last night's leaders' debate, the pressure has been ramped up on Sinn Féin. Mary Lou Macdonald's poor performance on questions about support of the Special Criminal Court and a suspected IRA murder in 2007 have given her opponents plenty to attack her with. Both Leo Varadkar and Micheál Martin have been vocally critical of Sinn Féin this morning. Elsewhere attention has turned to whether or not the Tipperary constituency will be allowed to vote on Saturday after the death of independent candidate Maurice Skeen. Tisha Lee of Radker gave this update. Yeah, so what's happening at the moment is the Attorney General is preparing uh, legal advice as to what the options are um, and, you know, the legal risks if you like and he'll submit that advice to Minister Murphy uh, later today uh, and then Minister Murphy will have to make a judgement call based on that legal advice while the Fianna Fáil leader, Micheál Martin, also awaits the advice. In my view, whatever decision is taken, make sure it secures the integrity and protects the integrity of the overall election. Be safe rather than sorry, is, is, would be my advice. It's expected voting will be allowed to go ahead, with count staff being told to still be prepared for the weekend. Sinn Féin's Conor Murphy will make a public apology to Paul Quinn's family today. Paul Quinn's mother, Breach, says she won't meet Mr Murphy, the North's Minister for Finance, until he apologises publicly for calling her son a criminal. The 21-year-old was killed in 2007 near Castle Blaney in County Monaghan by a gang his family suspects were linked to the IRA. Sinn Féin President Mary Lou MacDonald has confirmed he'll apologise to Paul's mother and his family in public later today. I'm very I'm very pleased that she has welcomed the, my remarks last night. I'm very pleased that she got a, a better night's sleep last night uh, than before. Uh, Connor Murphy will issue a statement later today. Uh, he will retract uh, and apologise for comments made uh, in relation to Paul. More than 1,700 crashes have closed around the country today in protest at high fees and low pay in the childcare sector. The issue is one of those raised at the second of WLR's election debate with Damien Tiernan on Data Today in the Granville Hotel last night. Elaine Walsh, who runs Thinovyog Montessori in Dunhill, asked what the parties would do to address the serious underfunding. We have people on minimum wage who sign on three times a year because it's seasonal work. 99% of the income for my early years service is from the government. It's through schemes. I cannot divide out the money they gave me, like the loaves and the fishes, but I want to know what you're going to do for the early years sector to address the seasonal work and the low pay and the critical underinvestment in the sector. Nigel candidate Councillor John Cummins says there needs to be more engagement with providers. We have invested heavily in childcare. We've invested over the last number of years. We've gone from increase from 274 million to over 638 Sorry, million John. of our childcare. But I acknowledge that that is not being seen by the workers. But we are trying to assist families in terms of their childcare. Mm-hmm. Rena Walsh from Learn Through Play in Johns Park and Waterford City says the money being spent in the sector has gone on administration instead of childcare. Because while you've increased investment, it's gone into different consultancies, it's gone into different inv- departments, it's gone into different uh, inspection processes, all of which leads to us doing an exasperation amount of paperwork that we can't, we can no longer cope with. And that takes from the children that were there. 
Sinn Fein's David Colnan says their manifesto, in their manifesto they've proposed a 500 million euro investment in this sector. So we want to do two things, reduce the cost of childcare for families, that of course is important, but we also need to make sure that the people who work in these centres have decent jobs, because I know many of them who can't afford childcare themselves, and they're childcare providers, so we have to get real, we have to make the investments. Meanwhile, the childcare workers are protesting in Dublin this afternoon. Charmaine Nivrian of Nainra Garvon Preschool in Dungarvan is outside the Doyle. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of people there. I'm actually shocked for the amount of people that are here because six years ago there wasn't half this number here protesting. So obviously the word has got out that enough is enough. These voters in Kilmac Thomas told us what issues are most important to them um, in this election. Infrastructure, like the bus service here, like I think for young people, the cost of putting a car on the road is just, it's astronomical now and it, there's not a good bus service. If you were to work in town and not drive, it would be a near impossibility with the bus service out here. Well, I'm from Bomans, I'm a forward route, like, but um, Bomans a forgotten village. Back 20 years ago, it was a lovely booming place. Nothing there now. No one cares. It's just sad. Kilmac is doing okay with the green and everything, everything is going grand, you know what I mean? Maybe they could build more, uh, some new houses in Kilmac Thomas for the people on the waiting list that are there with years. Sick note was handed into court this morning to excuse the attendance of a woman charged with the murder of her three children in Dublin. Deirdre Morley is accused of murdering her three-year-old daughter Carla and two sons, Connor and Dara, at their home in Parsons Court in Newcastle. The children's bodies were discovered on January 24th. Ms Morley was further remanded in custody today and the judge recommended that she continue to receive medical and psychiatric care. Waterford City and County Council has granted planning permission for an extension to a holiday park in Dungarvan. Bayview Caravan and Camping Park, which is owned by the Gold Coast Golf Resort, had applied for permission to expand its existing site. The development will consist of 27 new mobile home units and two new entrances within the Holiday Park. Labour Councillor Thomas Phelan says it's a vote of confidence in Dungarvan. I think it's a sign of how successful the Greenway has been and continues to be and how successful Dungarvan has been and continues to be, particularly as a food destination. A lot of people come into the area, they debase themselves for a short time in likes of the Gold Coast area or Clane and they'd take advantage of being able to cycle into Dungarvan or the short trip in and uh, do their business in town in terms of spending locally and buying locally and uh, availing of the facilities and pubs and restaurants in the area so it's a really good sign of uh, a continued tourism activity in the area. WLR Sport with thanks to the Waterford Viking Marathon. Register now at waterfordvikingmarathon.com Interim Deputy CEO of the FAI, Niall Quinn, says supporting the League of Ireland is a necessity, not a choice. The former Republic of Ireland striker was speaking at the launch of the domestic competition in Dublin today. Quinn says the association's rescue deal with the government means the League must become a priority. We're actually obliged to do it from the uh, support terms that we took. Uh, from Minister Ross last week. So um, it, the, the onus is on us as an association to become a proper enabler, uh, to make sure that at the, uh, at, at the top end of the game that players are looked after and that uh, stadiums are better for them and fans. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think that's obvious. Um, that needs to happen. And then down through the elite part of, of, of the uh, underage game, the academies, etc., that we're putting best practice in place in all our clubs uh, over the next five years. There's one game in the FA Cup fourth round tonight. Tottenham Hotspur host Southampton in a replay at the new White Hart Lane. Kickoff is at 7.45 with Norwich City awaiting the winners in the next round. Waterford footballers face a vital Division 4 National League tie on Saturday night as Wexford come to Friarfield for the round three encounter. The day shall have suffered defeats to Limerick and Wicklow in their opening two games. Captain Conor Murray's hoping they get their promotion bid back on track. They're starting to gain a bit of momentum now with Galvin in charge of them as well. They're, they're getting a bit of publicity about them as well, so that'll give them a bit of a lift. But look, we have a good record against Wexford the last three or four years and hopefully it'll continue on in a similar vein. Um, they're, look, they're a good team. They play similar enough to us. They're a good, strong running team. Good inside forwards as well. They scored 2-8. They're inside forward line last day, so they'll take a bit of minding. 
Rowan is at 7pm. We'll have updates here on WLR. Washford athlete Thomas Barr says his training's going well ahead of the Tokyo Olympics. The Ferrybank AC hurdler has one indoor race, the AIT Grand Prix, next Wednesday before the outdoor competition start in May. Thomas says he's looking forward to it. Just an indoor meet just for a bit of fun. It's one I've done the last couple of years just to kind of break up the winter slog and get the, the legs turning over again. So I'll just have the one indoor race and then uh, I'll be back into training all the way through till May when the competition, my outdoor competitions kick off. My main event then, the final hurdles, will be out, I'll be out for that then. Um, working towards yeah, the Olympics in the end of July and early August. Sports News on WLR, thanks to WaterfordVikingMarathon.com.